Hey, it's Owen, and today I'm in Studio B at Happy, and I'm gonna take a look at the Grace Design M905 Monitor Controller System. Grace Design is an incredibly high quality audio manufacturer out of Lyons, Colorado, USA. Founded by brothers Mike and even Grace around 1994. Before starting their own company, the brothers, both avid deadheads, have been active in the wide world of recording Grateful Dead live shows and were trying to figure out how to get their best sounding dead bootlegs to tape. Now, a monitor controller is an important part of all decent studios. It essentially forms the backbone of the listening system, controlling audio levels from their sources and sending this out to the studio monitors. With most standard controllers, you'll have a big old volume knob, a couple of switches to choose your input feed, and a couple of choices of speaker outputs to connect to your main and alternate reference monitors. Maybe a couple of extra options like a mono and a dim switch. Looking over at the M905, what we've got is a highly specialized mastering grade monitor controller built with the steadfast exacting approach of the Grace Design Company. They've gone to great lengths to simplify the unit whilst allowing multiple connections to your monitors, providing the kind of piece that will sit right at home in the classiest of recording studios. Of course, as it's a Grace unit, there's a lot more options available once you start to get familiar with the box, and you'll begin to notice that pretty much all areas are covered. It's a two-part unit. You've got a rack section providing the main connectivity and the brain of the unit, with a wired controller that sits on the desk or console. Let's take a look over the controller. The controller is a solid folded aluminium enclosure with an adjustable usage angle that goes from flat to what I'm guessing is that 45 degrees. Pretty perfect for placing wherever you need it nearby in the studio. The only wiring is a 15 pin custom cable between the controller and the rack unit, which comes with plenty of length. You can also plug your monitoring headphones into this or direct into the rack section, whichever is easier or closer. The first thing I noticed on the controller is the constantly changing SPL level meter on the LCD screen, which is really handy for the studio. I read that you shouldn't exceed 85 dB in level over an eight hour period, so it's really useful to be able to see this in real time, monitoring from an inbuilt microphone, because I kind of want to have these ears working so I can keep at this job till I'm pretty old. Above this, we've got speaker and headphone levels, both on a scale of 100. The adjustment curve is logarithmic, so be aware of that as you slowly ramp up the volume. You've also got a plethora of buttons here, and I'll try to walk you through them all. Across the color LCD screen, you'll see all the different inputs covered by the eight black buttons above and below this screen. We've got unbalanced for RCA cable input, so next time someone wants to whack in an aux cable, you're covered. Balanced for your desk or interface output. Q output for hearing back your studio headphone monitoring system. And five separate digital inputs for Toslink, ADAT, SPDIF, AES-1, and USB. Next up, we've got buttons for a choice of three speaker outputs. A mute button, which if you hold it, also acts as a solo option for left or right channels and a dim button, which if you hold that, allows you to play with the crossfeed of the headphones, so each channel won't be completely isolated from each other, and you'll get a more realistic headphone experience when you're mixing on them, compare back to their speakers. And then we've got a sub-mute button. There's two sub-outputs on the rack box, dual mono or stereo. And if you hold this, you'll solo the subs. There's a handy mono button, and if you hold it, you get left minus right coming out both speakers. The setup button is pretty self-explanatory and will take you into setup mode for each of the inputs, headphone mode and system setup. The monitor to cue button does exactly that. It sends what's coming out your speakers to the studio headphone system. And if you hold it, it clears your peak SPL level. And finally, TalkBack uses the internal microphone to send the sweet sound of your audio engineer's barking commands through the headphone or cue send to the musicians in the tracking room dimming the monitors whilst doing so. And of course, right in the middle, we've got a big old knob for adjusting the volume. Momentarily push it to switch between your own monitors and headphone level control, and hold it down to reset your monitor level to zero or mute the headphones. Now that we've gone over the controller itself, we can take a quick squiz at the two unit rack box where the brains for this thing live. 
Across the back of this, you've got all the connectors for everything I've mentioned above. Beyond that, it's just kind of a sleek, big box that'll blend into your equipment racks, just how it should. There's a few surprises back here too. You can control this thing with another word clock, or have this running the show by the connectors on the back. You can also connect it to an external talkback mic if you feel that you need to use something more authoritarian sounding than the one built in. And you can set up an external switch for it too, rather than the button on the controller. Additionally, you can use this thing as a recording front end if you really want to. The USB input will pass 10 channels to your computer and you can squeeze another eight out of the ADAT section. But I'm gonna focus on this thing purely as a monitor controller, which you can also apparently set up to be controlled by an Apple remote or via an iOS or Android app too. And there we have it, the Grace Design M905, the successor to their popular M904 monitor controller system. So how does this thing sound? After working with a bunch of Grace Design equipment, I've come to expect absolutely transparent, pristine sound quality from their boxes. And that's indeed what the M905 does. In the studio, you need to be able to completely trust your monitors in order to get great results in your recordings and mixes. And thus, you need to trust your monitor controller that's sitting between your interface and your speakers. The only thing I missed with this unit is the ability to have multiple balanced inputs running into the M905 but I've just found out that there's an analog version that skips all the digital inputs and has a second balanced input pair available for your choice. A unit that's built as solid as this is gonna cost you. And this one will set you back about six and a half grand in Australia and comes with a transferable five year warranty. Is it worth it? Well, if you're at the level where you can't compromise on listening quality with your monitor controller, then it's potentially for you. I compare it with the Crane Song Abaset 2, but with a more solid, weighty build, an SPL level meter, and a lot more digital options. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next time for more stuff.